Hear the word of the Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, he, that is Jesus, was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. That's the word of the Lord. So for a little while this morning, we want to talk from the, the title, a miracle and a proper response. A miracle and a proper response. Despite living in this post-industrial, highly technological age, miracles are still in high demand. According to a recent survey, 72% of Americans believe that miracles can occur. And because of this general belief in miracles, there is a host of preachers who make the performance of miracles their specialty. They use articles of clothing. They use so-called holy water. They use so-called blessed olive oil as vehicles to access the miraculous. And people flock to be healed, to seize an opportunity to obtain a financial windfall, et cetera, and et cetera. What we can see is that people are in need. People who are desperate for a healing or, or desperate for a financial blessing are likely to seek such from miracle preachers. Though we should be extra, extra, extra cautious regarding miracle mangas, biblical faith, however, shows us a miracle working Christ who is concerned about our desperate needs, our deep seated needs, and he has the power to meet them. Above all, he is able to save us from spiritual death and grant us eternal life. So as we approach this text, we're going to raise up this first point, the region of the miracle. The geographical location is key here. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And this is possibly before the raising of Lazarus in Bethany of Judea. That's recorded in John chapter 11. And Jesus here is passing through a borderland between Samaria and Galilee. Samaria was a region north of Judea and was populated by, by people of multi-ethnic and multi-racial descent. This had been the, the region of the northern kingdom of Israel, which fell to the Assyrians around 725 BCE. People from what is now modern Iraq displaced, were displaced and brought to this region. And they would eventually accept a, a form of Judaism, not Judaism in its P 
pure form, but a form of it. And so they had a rival Judaistic faith with the people who dwelled in the South. And, and up to this time, up to the time of Jesus, uh, 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 these folk who had, who had their own form of Judaism had never been accepted by the Jews. And so Jesus is passing through this area, and he's also passing nearby Galilee, which was his home region. So that's the region of the miracle. And second, the recipients of the miracle. Jesus is passing through a certain village, according to Luke. And again, I want to remind you that this is a, a, a borderland area, not quite Samaria, not quite Galilee. And there are 10 lepers in this area, lepers, men who had this skin disease that was nearly incurable and it was highly contagious. And because of this, going all the way back to the days of Moses, Moses had prescribed in Leviticus chapter 13 and verse 46 that he who had leprosy shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. So because of this law, lepers had to keep their distance from the healthy. So when Jesus was passing by, they, they came as close as they could lawfully. But as Jesus was passing by, they uttered a prayer. They had heard about Jesus out in this borderland. Jesus at this point had fame. He was basically at the height of his notoriety in Palestine. People knew about his healing power. They'd heard about him raising Jairus' daughter from the dead. They'd heard that he was giving sight to the blind and, and making the lame to walk. People knew about Jesus. And people knew about his power. And, and undoubtedly, these lepers knew that somehow, some way, Jesus could help them. Their prayer here was simple. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They were loud. They didn't whisper this prayer. They didn't say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. No, 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 no. They were loud because they were desperate uh, 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 to get the Lord's attention. They, they threw caution aside because they knew that this Jesus had the power to heal and that this Jesus was passing through in their village, in this borderland, and, 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 and he was passing near their leper's community. So their loud supplication drew the Lord's attention. Notice in the text that Jesus, he, he, he saw them. He, he, he noticed them. And, and their prayers came into his eyes. I'm sorry, his prayers came into his ears and, and he cast his eyes upon them. And when he cast his eyes upon them, he was able to see their condition. Uh, uh, he, he could see the scales and, and the sores on their skin. He, he could see their state of being cut off from the rest of the village. And because of what he saw, he had compassion upon them. And notice what else the text says here. Jesus spoke to these men. He said, 
Go show yourselves to the priests. Now, 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 now what does this mean? A leper had to show himself or herself when he believed that he had been cured of leprosy somehow or some way. And the priest in Moses' day, the priest in Jesus' day was like the health inspector uh, who, who could pronounce a leper cure. So, so Jesus is giving these men this command. This means that he had an intention to heal them. Now, they didn't ask for healing, not, 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 not specifically. They asked for mercy. And, and, and when Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest, he didn't say, I'm going to heal you. He just said that. But, but if you were in their condition, you, you would have put two and two together and, and knew possibly that healing is going to come to me this day. The text says that the men obeyed. No, they, they, had, they had to expect that they were being healed. Now, can you imagine their anticipation? Rapid heartbeat. Dreams of returning to the village from their borderland encampment flashing through their heads. Luke states that while they were along the way, that they were cleansed of their leprosy. Jesus had healed them without saying a word. He determined their healing in his heart, and they were healed. Their skin became like new. We can imagine they began to feel their skin. We can imagine they began to rejoice. They knew that their stay outside of the village was over. But now, the third and final point, the response to the miracle. Luke notes the actions of one of the lepers. When he, when he noticed his cleansing, he praised the Lord with a loud voice. He worshiped the Lord, falling down, prostrate on his knee, fell on his face, prostrate before the Lord. Then the clincher. Luke mentions that he was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan. He was an outsider. He was the other. He is the one who returns to give Jesus the glory. And notice how Jesus responds. He asks three questions. Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? The first two. These questions here are an indictment, not, 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 not to the man that came back. This is an indictment to the nine because it, it seems here that Jesus expected all of these lepers would come back and give him glory. The third question is so important. Was no one found to return and give glory to God except this foreigner? Now, this question here assumes that the others were Jews. If, if, if anyone who should have returned to give glory to God, it should have been those who were part of the covenant community. Why hadn't they returned? Did they feel entitled? They feel that their Jewishness in some way merited them this favor from the Lord? Had they just forgot? 
caught up in the moment. Well, whatever the reason, they had no excuse for not returning in giving Jesus the glory. But we have here a racial, an ethnic, a religious other who responded properly. In light of this man's response, Jesus claims that this man's faith had made him well. Yes, this man had believed that Jesus could heal him. But Jesus revealed something more. The man's response revealed something about the quality of his faith. His faith was actual saving faith. His response of praise and thanksgiving demonstrated that not only was his skin cleansed, but that his heart had been changed. He realized that he was totally undeserving of Jesus' mercies. And owing to that, he praised the Lord. That's the recipient. What are some applications we can draw from this passage? Got three. One application is we see at work the nature and purpose of prayer. Prayer expresses our needs. Prayer expresses our deep-seated needs. Again, notice that the lepers were not quiet. They were loud in expressing their needs their, 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 and, their, and their longings. And, and, and part of prayer is a holy anticipation because they asked for mercy. And, and I believe that they expected to receive mercy. And they received it. They obeyed Jesus when he said, go show yourselves to the priest. These are lessons for us, beloved, that when we pray, let's expect that the Lord will go about and do us good. When, when we ask for mercy, let's expect that we shall receive mercy. Yeah. Well, Jeremiah wrote in Lamentations, his mercies never come to an end. And if you don't know, we need Jesus. One songwriter said, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. A second application is that the marginal becomes the center. A Samaritan received mercy. A racial and ethnic other. He who was on the margins, not only because of his leprosy. I want y'all to get that. He was not on the margins because he had a skin disease, but he was on the margins because of his ethnicity. And in light of his leprosy, in light of his other status, Jesus brings him to the center. And this is good news this morning, brothers and sisters, because some of us find ourselves on the margins of this society. But Jesus found us on the margins. Jesus came to the margins. He didn't, we, we didn't have to come to him. Notice that the lepers had to stand a far distance from him, but Jesus met them on the margins. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, he, 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 he doesn't mind associating with the, the, the societal outcasts. It, it doesn't matter where you are on the margins. 
Jesus will go see about you. Jesus is not the savior of the status quo, but he's the savior of all people, even those who find themselves on the edges. I like what Paul said in Ephesians 2, 13 and 14, but now in Christ you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. So he comes to the margins and he places us in the center. And finally, we see an expression or an example of the glory that is due the Lord. The Samaritan leper shows, she shows us how we ought to respond to the miracles of the Lord. He had a condition that no one could cure. He had a malady that no one could help but Jesus. Yes, he was healed of leprosy. But he was also healed of his soul's disease. He went back praising. He went back and worshiped. It doesn't seem that he was worried about being cute. And he wasn't worried about being polite. Because something great had happened to him. Something miraculous had happened to him. Oh, brothers and sisters, Jesus healed us of the leprosy of our soul. And that's enough for us to give him the praise and worship. That's enough. Uh, 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 that's enough to praise him all the days of our lives. We ought to praise him because he loves us. We ought to praise him. Because he took on our flesh. We ought to praise him that he came down from heaven and to live here on earth. We ought to praise him that he died for us. We ought to praise him that he was buried for us. We ought to praise him that he got up on the first day morning with all power in his hands. And I'm glad this morning that I can sing and that you can sing like the old saints used to sing. Oh, 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 what he's done for me. I never can forget what he's done for me. He took my feet out the miry clay. That's what he's done for me. He saved my soul from a burning hell. That's what he's done for me. Ain't God all right? Isn't he all right this morning? I know he's all right. Why don't you praise him? Why don't you praise him? He's all right. God bless you as you continue to serve him.